Curves and compass, let's do a bit of revision. Remember that in the previous grade, we had learned about treble clefs and that they are also, a treble clef is also called the G clef because it circulates around the G line. And at this stage, we know how to write the treble clef and the base clef sign. Remember that the treble clef sign is for high pitch instruments and the bass clef sign for low pitch instruments. Also the bass clef is called the F because of the spot uh, that starts on the fourth line which is F and the two dots between the third and fourth line putting the F in between. Examples on how to draw the treble clef. As we have said it curves around the G line. This is the G line, the second line of the treble clef going up do not cross the B, going down, do not go below the E, then up, 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 then you tuck it in, it comes back inside, down, 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 below the first line of the treble clef. Then, there you go, you should have something like this. The bass clef, spot and calf starts on the fourth line. This is the fourth line. There is the spot. It must not go over this line. And you can curve it down till your second line of the base clef. Then putting our two spots on the third and fourth spaces. Don't forget this. Remember also we labeled our lines and spaces for both clefs. And we had used a phrase, every good boy does fine or deserves food. Uh, E for the first line of the treble clef, G, second line of the treble clef, B, the third line, D for deserve uh, on the fourth line, and F, our last line of the treble clef. Then we use the word space, F for the first space of the treble clef, A, second space, C, third space, E, sorry, E for the last space. Then for the bass clef, the lines Gary Beck does funny ads. And we had said you can create your own little phrases to help you remember the five lines of the clefs. G as the first line, Bex, B for Bex, second line, D, third line, F, funny, fourth line, and the last line, A for X. Space is the first space is represented by A, A for all, C for cows, E for eat. G for grass. These are the lines and spaces for both treble and bass clef. We had also covered ledger lines. Remember that ledger lines are lines and spaces above or below the staff. So these are lines and spaces above or below the staff. The main purpose is to cover or accommodate notes that are higher than the staff. For example, we have notes that would go maybe higher than the last line of the treble clef then those notes need to be accommodated on the ledger lines and spaces also notes that fall below maybe the first line of the bass clef which is g then the note would be f it will have to fall on the spaces and ledger lines for the bass clef remember the distance between the ledger lines and the spaces should be the same as the lines and spaces on the staff. Keep the distance the same. Each note should have its own ledger line. Remember, we are avoiding unnecessary ledger lines above or below notes. To find the correct letter names above the staff, count upwards from the fifth line. Your fifth line should be your last line of the staff. So count five lines, uh, count five, uh, count upwards from the fifth line in the treble or bass clef. And to find the correct let letter names below the staff, count downwards from the last line. From the last line, you count downwards, both bass and treble clef. Notes on the ledger line below the treble clef fall in the bass clef. And also notes uh, above the bass clef fall into the treble clef. This is the grand stuff. 
it represents both treble and bass clef combined. The middle C, remember, is the same for the treble clef and the bass clef. This is where your middle C is located. Note what we mean when we say notes on the ledger line below the treble clef. So notes from this line, this is your E. That means from D, it should fall on your bass clef, but now we just write them on the ledger lines. Also, notes above this last line of the bass clef, they fall on the treble clef. That means all the notes above the middle C will go on the treble clef. Notes below the middle C will go on the bass clef. Ledger lines. This picture illustrates ledger lines. As we have mentioned on the previous page, this is F. So you just count upwards from the last line. So this is the last line to determine notes on the bass clef. So it's, remember, it's always line, space, then line again, space. Keep the same ledger line for A, but avoid the extra ledger line on top because we do not need it, but we're going to need it after the space comes line C. That's when you draw your ledger line. Then you keep both uh, A line and the C to get your D. So this is A, C, then you have your D on the space. Same goes. So same goes for your base clef. Notes below the ledger line. You count from the last line to get your D on the space, C on the line, B on the space. All these notes, they can fall on the base clef. Notes above the treble clef. F, G, A, B, C, D. Notes below the treble clef. D, C, B, A, G, etc. Notes like B, A, G below the middle C fall on the bass clef. So this is the B, C. And this is the middle C. This should be your middle C. Which is somewhere here. If we are not using ledger lines. Then B, A. They start falling on the bass clef. Then D since it's above the middle C, will fall on this D, is the same as this one, same pitch. Right, this is your middle C. So, A is on the fifth line of the bass clef, and G is on the fourth space of the bass clef. So, this is the fifth line. Notes above the bass clef. Notes like D, E, F above the middle C fall on the treble clef. So D, this is the D I'm talking about. E should be somewhere here. Uh, somewhere here. This should be your E. Then F obviously will take the first space of the treble clef. So E is on the first line of the treble clef. And F the first space of the treble clef. Like I've just explained. Clefs can change at a certain point in a song. The change can happen between bars or notes in a measure. A new clef is introduced before the bar line to indicate changes of pitches. Sometimes we find that a new clef is placed before a phrase. See examples below. So our clef, the given clef, is the bass clef. As the music progresses, a new clef is introduced before the bar line. This means starting from this bar, from this point, all the notes will fall on the treble clef. Then another new clef is introduced, the bass clef. Then from here is the bass clef. Notes fall on the bass clef. Then another clef is introduced, treble clef again. Then you play notes on the treble clef. You read this as the treble clef until a new clef is introduced. There we go. The bass clef again. All these notes, they fall on the bass clef, treble clef, notes, so on and so on. Bass clef, treble clef is introduced just before the new bar again. This one is introduced in the middle of the bar. But all this is not necessary. Remember, we mentioned your grand stuff. This is your grand stuff. Your grand stuff should help you to notate like your changes if you want to change let's say for example you want to change 
uh, in the middle of a bar like here you want to introduce a clef in the middle of the bar instead of writing a new clef rather write the notes on the treble clef or on the bass clef on the grand staff so you would rather use your grand staff here so if you want you you want the next note on the treble clef just write on the treble clef and the next note on the bass clef than having to introduce uh clefs all over the bar is this is just meant to to decrease confusion and make reading music easier